Today I want to talk about some of Inscription's most underrated cards and sigils, such as ones that I used to think weren't as good as I think they are now because I found some pretty solid interactions with them, and ones that I don't think really get talked about very much, or that I think players might underestimate. Cards that seem like they may not have much use, but it turns out that they do, especially in Skullstorm for a lot of these, because some cards are particularly useful for fighting the 8 bears. So first, I want to look at what I believe is Inscription's most underrated sigil, Touch of Death. This sigil is found on the Adder and the Long Elk, and it instantly destroys any card that they attack, regardless of the target's health. It can even be used to one-shot the moon in Act 1. And for that exact reason, a new sigil was added to Casey's mod called Made of Stone that protects its card specifically from the Touch of Death sigil, as well as the Stinky Sigil, because that was also used to cheese the moon. So, Touch of Death is so good that they had to make another Sigil just to counter it. Well, I guess by that logic, Airborne is also really good, so, um... Uh, never mind. You can still one-shot the moon or Limoncello with Touch of Death and Casey's mod by removing the Made of Stone Sigil from them with the Magical Bleach item. Touch of Death is also really useful in a couple of specific battles, like the one where Leshy has a Mole and a Turkey Vulture, or the one where Leshy has a Mole Man and a Moose Buck. And of course, it can help you deal with the Mole, uh, but Touch of Death gets even better if you're doing a Skullstorm run, because it's an easy way to get rid of a Grizzly. And there are certain combos you can do to get rid of multiple Grizzlies as well, so Adder and Long Elk are much more useful than I used to think. One of the combos you can do with Touch of Death is add the Sharp Quills Sigil from the Porcupine. A card with both sigils will not only one-shot anything that it attacks, but also anything that attacks it, because the damage done from Sharp Quills also triggers the Touch of Death Sigil. So by having a card with both sigils, you can take out two Grizzlies in just one turn. Another group of cards that I found to be more useful than I thought includes the River Snapper and the Hodag. Those two are the only two blood cost cards that, without any buffs, have enough health to survive an attack from a Grizzly, since they have five or more health, and Grizzlies have four attack. If you buff the Hodag's attack with its own hidden effect enough, or give River Snapper the Touch of Death sigil, then these cards are also able to take out multiple Grizzlies all on their own. The Mud Turtle is also able to do the same thing thanks to its Armored sigil, which will let it tank any hit, and because it's a sigil, you could give that ability to other cards with a sigil transfer as well. So each of these three cards gives you some defense against the Wall of Bears, and also are able to take some of them out with just one buff. You could also just buff the Adder's health a couple of times, and then it can also take out two bears, surviving a hit from one as well, without any sigil transfers. And speaking of defense against the bears, if you are using one of those strategies to get rid of a lane of grizzlies, then you're going to need to protect yourself from the other three lanes. And the most efficient way to do that is with the beaver or douse cards. Both of them protect three zones, so they're enough on their own to stall the bears for an entire turn. The summoned dams and bells also get any added sigils, so as I talked about in this video, you can essentially triple any applicable sigil, which can lead to some really broken combos. I also want to talk about the pronghorn. At three health, it just needs one health buff to survive a bear attack, and its bifurcated sigil essentially doubles its attack. With one health buff and the Touch of Death sigil, by placing Pronghorn in the second zone from the left, it can potentially take out four bears. That's half of the eight bears with just one card. So you might be thinking, but isn't Mantis just better since it also has bifurcated and only costs one blood? Well, that depends. If you're already using the fair hand mechanic with something, then you want to avoid one blood cost cards like the Mantis. And so having a two blood cost option with Bifurcated can be really useful in that situation. If you don't know what the fair hand mechanic is, then please go check out this video, as uh, I don't want to have to explain it again, and I'm sure a lot of you already know about it as well. But fair hand makes higher cost cards more important, since you'll be taking more of them as you'll be avoiding low cost cards and Pronghorn happens to be a very useful 2-blood cost card. 
And speaking of useful high cost cards, I think pretty much all of the three blood cost cards are quite good. I don't think that Direwolf is underrated at all, uh, I'm pretty sure no one is underestimating that. Uh, but also, the Great White is not very good because it has absolutely no defense, but the other three three blood cards are pretty good. That's right, there are only five total three blood cards in the entire game, and two of them are exclusive to Casey's mod. What that means is that if you go to the cost card drop event and choose three blood, then there's a 20% chance of getting any given one of them in Casey's mod, or 33% in Act 1. That makes three bloods easier to get multiple copies of than most other cards, and therefore to use with the mycologists to easily get a card with really high stats or with broken sigil combos. If you're using the black goat starter deck, then you already start with one moose buck, and again, it's really easy to get another one thanks to the cost card drop event. So a moose buck is one of the easiest cards to set up for a broken mycologist play. The last card I want to talk about is Packrat. Even though Packrat is always useful, I think it's even more useful than many players think. Obviously, getting extra items is very good, but another thing I like about Packrat is that you can guarantee getting one on any run, even Skullstorm where boss rares are disabled by that one challenge. That's because going to an item drop event while you're full on items will get you a Packrat instead. Always having the option to get a pack rat makes it a very reliable card, and in many runs, the backpack event is one of the first events you go to, so you can get a pack rat very early on as well. If you're using a starter deck that doesn't start with a lot of power, like the Gek deck or the Egg deck, then getting an early pack rat can give you some much needed damage output as well. And even getting pack rat from bosses can be good since sometimes the other two options will be One Bloods or Gek. So if you're already abusing the fair hand mechanic, then you'd have to take pack rat so that you don't disrupt that strategy. That goes for all rares that aren't one bloods or gek. Uh, getting just one option from a rare drop that will preserve a fair hand strategy has happened to me many times. So instead of taking Luke's advice of always picking Mantis God, I find myself taking things like Amoeba and Amalgam and even Uriuli much more often just so that I can keep using the fair hand mechanic to my advantage. It's also really easy to get multiple pack rats because of the item event, so like with Moose Buck, it's also very easy to use pack rat for a mycologist play. So those were the cards in Act 1 and Casey's mod that I think are the most underrated. And of course, pack rat, who truly is always useful, since you can get one always. That's what Leshy really meant by that. So let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, if you agree with these and any other cards that you think are underrated. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.